Sisi Nepal in Macintosh. Hello everybody, this is your host Nino and in tonight's experiment we shall talk a little bit about installing Mac OS Monterey on VirtualBox 6.1.32, a version of VirtualBox which is not at all made to run this operating system. And I'm saying tonight because this clock is truly woefully off. I believe though that the general principles and, and the general advice which I might give you might be applicable also in the future also for different other versions of Mac OS. At least I hope so. So <laughs> that's why I decided to do this. And it's not a complete walkthrough as there are truly sufficient amounts of tutorials online, but it is more a summary of certain personal experiences I had while trying to pull this off. Now, first of all, there are tutorials how to directly install Monterey on VirtualBox. For one reason or the other that did not work with me. Like I was having all sorts of issues and gave up on that. Instead, I went to a version of macOS which is close to the last version supported by this version of VirtualBox. VirtualBox is supporting 10.13 High Sierra, but I discovered that without great difficulty you can install on this thing Catalina, which is 10.15. And the route I then took to Monterey was through updates. The first thought one has is that you are just going to go to the system update option and you're just going to click on update to Monterey and uh, that's going to have been it, right? Well, I'll tell you what happens then. A reboot loop happens and kernel panic and God knows what, but you're anyway getting a black screen, white letters and your system is dead. So don't do that. Generally speaking, after a couple of such experiences, you also learn that it's not a bad idea to clone your virtual machine and to work with backups, a bit like in the movie Edge of Tomorrow, where you are slowly making headway towards the desired direction, and if things go wrong, that you have something to return to. And I can't tell you how many virtual machines I burned through until I reached this stage, so do backups. The first thing which I found out was you can't go from Catalina to Monterey in any stable fashion. What did however work rather nicely was going from Catalina to Big Sur. The only difference was that Big Sur felt even more sluggish than Catalina. And the sluggishness can be however greatly ameliorated if you turn on 3D acceleration in your graphics options for the virtual box. So that makes actually also Big Sur a rather nice system. Though for everyday use, if you have no need to update, I tell you Catalina seemed to be fine enough, like my personal opinion. And once you get that far, once you get to Big Sur, you will need to make certain adjustments of the system before you can actually run Monterey successfully. In fact, I was even a couple of times able to install Monterey, but even after a brief run, and I'm talking here three minutes, five minutes, once just at the login screen, it will just kernel panic and drop to some text interface and that's it, your system dies. <laughs> then you can reboot it and sometimes holding the shift key, which doesn't get you into safe mode, but which apparently signals something useful anyway, you can then actually still get the system back up running, but again you log in and another five minutes and, and it's dead again. So Monterey felt snappier than, than Big Sur, but it was just a single suicide mission. <laughs> you couldn't use that. And then I googled a bit around and I found out that with VBox Manage you can set some extra properties of your system which you might need to have to do 
if you would like to run this in a stable fashion. Now these two commands were the ones I needed that you modify your virtual machine in order to set certain CPU properties and what also some people seem to be doing is they seem to be setting their processor to a certain type of Xeon. For me that didn't turn out to be necessary but in case you experience further crashes you might have to set it to Xeon too. Like just Google Monterey Xeon and VBox Manage it will be very quickly shown to you what you need to do. What was also counterintuitive but really important was to give Monterey only one single CPU. I was actually thinking that it would be more useful to give it more cores so that it has more resources but these cores apparently were prone to cause some sort of race condition and the whole thing was crashing. With one CPU things are working reliably. And I set the para virtualization interface to KVM. I'm not sure that did anything, but anyway, right now it's running pretty stably. Now, that is the path in general terms. In detail, I had little luck with doing things through the official update interface of the system. In particular, I couldn't go to Big Sur. Like I had an update for further Catalina versions, but I had also an update for Monterey, which like kills everything, but I had no update for Big Sur. So instead of that, I went to a website called Mr. Macintosh. And Mr. Macintosh seems to be some form of unofficial place where you can get all sorts of installers. And I first got 11.5.2 for Big Sur, and then I got 12.3.1 for Monterey. My Big Sur version isn't even the newest at, at the time of this video, but it was just working better for, for me on this version of VirtualBox. And how do you get your installers running on, <laughs> like your installers onto your system? Well, the installers are sort of packages and install like normal programs and once you double click them the installation takes place and then you greet it if everything goes wrong uh, goes right with a new system and that can take actually like two or three hours if your system isn't fast and mine really isn't fast uh, <laughs> so don't be surprised if it takes a long time that's normal and then you are ready to install the next installer as an application and go forward that way. And each time you make an upgrade, the previous installer is being removed because it's not needed anymore. So that's great. But what you can't use are, for instance, shared folders because for this version of macOS, VirtualBox is not offering extensions. So what do you do? First thing I tried was uh, Samba Share, you know, SIFs. That crashed. Like it worked on Catalina, it found it, it got the Big Sur installer, everything's great. I ran it, everything's fine. But when I tried to get the Monterey installer that way, Big Sur was just opening the share and immediately crashing. Instead of that, I used a trick if you're having on your host system. Python 3. It has an implanted HTTP server. Here I'm starting it as an example just to demonstrate it. And then if you go with your browser from the guest, like from the virtual machine, and you go to to the IP address, like I'm demonstrating it here on localhost, but it would be then the IP address of the host, then you actually just get your localized folder as a web page. And from there, you could click on your huge 12 gigabyte installer and get it into the system rather nicely. And that way you save yourself a couple of 12 gigabyte downloads, you know, like you just get the installers and keep them on the host system and let the guests eat them and try to get somewhere through upgrades. And should anything fail, you just need to transfer from host to guest and not download 12 gigabyte once again. Now, I have that system, so <laughs> perhaps an opinion? Well, if that were to be permitted, I shall speak from the view of someone who is more used to using Linux. And Mac OS 
feels like a beautifully painted jail. I understand why some people like it, in fact many people like it, and I understand that it is like easy to use and this and that, but it is only easy as long as nothing goes wrong. Because if things do go wrong, it is not like in Linux when you're getting, uh, you know, an unlimited possibility to enter the depths of the system and you can, you know, adjust things in any wanton way you want. Here the advice you commonly find is, did you start the system in safe mode? Have you tried your recovery partition? If everything fails, will you perhaps bring it to one of our service centers? And that's not the way I like to do things. I like to be dependent just upon myself and the forums and the people I meet online and not to be like, um, you know, reset it and pray for something, for something better. <laughs> no thanks, I don't really want to see what is new here. So, so in that regard I felt limited. I don't know how to otherwise say that. First thing I did was I, I tried to get my Lisp system, so <laughs> I got here, like I'm very fond of Common Lisp as my pro normal programming environment, so I got here Armed Bear Common Lisp, which is a Java-based version and it runs just nicely, though it has a remarkably long startup time. Like normally this thing is up in two seconds for me, in this virtual machine it needs, as you can see, well, a couple more, hmm? like let's say it's seven or eight seconds, something like that. And I did get a decent Python version because this thing comes packaged with a Python version, but I believe it's some Python 2.7, let me see. And I... <laughs> this doesn't even find it, okay, maybe it didn't even come with a Python version, but I wanted to have a Python 3 version and Python 3 uh, was, uh, uh, as of the time of this video, 3.10.4, which is decent and usable. So that alleviated things at least a little bit, but still it feels it feels like I'm supposed to do only the things I'm supposed to do and I would like to do the things I'm not supposed to do, right? Like, just to be frank. <laughs> it's maybe not the fault of the system, but that's just a personal preference which is not fully reflected here. And hence, I believe that that's the only time this virtual machine r will be really put to use. For me, it was also more a question of the experience. And the point that you might need to set your CPU to something specific I believe is applicable perhaps beyond that specific experiment and do keep it in mind if you were to decide to try this out. Now perhaps I should also point out that you are supposed to run that thing in VirtualBox only on Apple hardware, at least according to their EULA. And yeah, uh, such questions of jurisdiction, validity of clauses, uh, details of EULA and so on, I leave to you. This video here merely serves as a technical commentary, not as legal advice. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it inspirational and should you try yourself these experiments, uh, be, be aware that you have another venue which is not just to flat um, like try Mo Monterey, but you might update your way up up to way unsupported versions <laughs> like unsupported on VirtualBox. And with that actually tonight's video ends. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot for dropping by. I hope to greet you here soon again. I wish you a great night because it's after midnight actually. <laughs> and hope to see you here soon again. And for me, goodbye.